Hi, we're in the next part. I was busy talking about the curses that South African men are refusing to fight. Yesterday, I uncovered or I unpacked a dream that uh, the Lord gave me where he showed me that South African men are frozen in place, especially within the black community. They are literally just stagnant, frozen in one position because all they do is fight over women and they allow Jezebel girls to run the show all over. Well, if those are the men that are all over the show, if it's these Nambi Pambi, I'm prepared to stand up against like dark structures, are not spiritual warriors are not into fasting into praying and not into actively ripping out the darkness from within their core because they were born in a family of the Sangoma or born in a family of people that are into ancestral worship or born in a family of just complacent like Nambi Pambi manhood if they're not actively striving and fighting again you know guys uh, there was uh, there are these uh, two um, carpenters so that my mom every so often hires to do carpentry work for her and one of them is a dude that looks looked no older at least looks uh, he's still alive like 27 8 9 all right and the night before they had been he had a crush on me didn't quite know my age thought i was his age and so like was busy flirting the living daylights with me so i was telling him about something that happened the night before there was some kind of dude that was not a dude like don't even give him such a nice little like a uh, description uh what rather epithet de he deserves as a criminal um this random there was a criminal that in the wee hours of the morning was trying to steal things from out of my car my mother's car he was actually just doing the rounds of the complex the next morning it was um a whole thing like people had things missing out of their cars but i busted him i caught him because i wanted to use the toilet in the middle of the night i i was working I got out of bed and I opened the door and as soon as I opened the door I noticed a shadow in the in the garage and when I noticed that shadow instead of hiding and hunkering down or running to my cell phone or screaming I literally was like hey and when I went to go and open the gate to try and interrogate what's going on this guy he ran away right I told that story to the dude who came the next day to do carpentry work on the property for my mom and I was like, yes, yesterday there was like this guy, mega food, he has a light chart thing. E motos avant to keep touches into sorry. There's a guy here that was busy like stealing stuff. He wanted to steal stuff from other people's cars and what have you. And I busted him. I personally busted him. Like I got to see the the guy in a way that everybody else that was sleeping just didn't. And I tried to confront him and he ran away. Do you know what this guy's response was? You tried to confront him? You tried to confront Omulati like he was so shocked and so surprised that I had rather as opposed to a flight response in adrenaline had a fight response. I wanted to go after that guy and get him I guess apprehended due to the fact that I had a comprehension in my core that he is uh, I've got a home ground advantage. That's what was running in my veins. I am in a complex full of people. If I scream, they're all gonna come out. This guy's gonna get cornered. So if he wants to be brave, if he wants to be brave, this guy, he is going to basically get out of here in a body bag. I had that comprehension. I, I would not approach a gangster or a criminal in downtown Joburg trying to steal a woman's purse. But here, I had home field advantage. And so I knew that if I could just kind of, you know, like, yeah, like pounce on, not so much pounce on him, but threaten him with, you know, arriving in his environment where he is busy stealing, he will run. I was trying to get him to run because he was around my car. Must I cower? Must I allow him to steal things out of my car? Like, no, I'm not going to do that. And this dude, this black man was shocked that I tried to confront a criminal that was busy stealing from the complexes vehicles at night while people slept. Those are our men. They run when it gets hot. They allow women's, purse, women's purses to get stolen in public. They allow in, in, on the street. They allow girls who are getting kidnapped or hijacked or whatever on the side of the street to get taken by the jack rollers. They allow women to languish, suffer. Damsel in distress, Mashiye. I saw him in Funuglimala. They've got this whole I'm gonna protect myself thing. No longer do they have got a very heroic rescue constitution. And so I find it exorbitantly annoying when these random buffoons, when on social media they hear me cry about how my life sucks, only then they wanna rock up and rescue the freaking day. You would never have come to rescue the day you did not stand up for me when I was busy losing my career. I don't know how many men had massive feelings for me in the organization that I worked for, that observed the mutiny against my life, that knew I was innocent, that had a that, that could stand for me, that upon observing and being witnesses of the mutiny against me, could have been witnesses in my case at the CCMA that coward.
they cowered do you understand because they were looking at everybody else and how they were scared to lose their own careers i was right justice stood to be served i was right and so they stood to be protected in their jobs by mere virtue of me being right but they cowered that's the men in this country namby pamby unless of course they find a woman from a nice little neat distance in youtube on facebook that are like that's like oh goodness life sucks and then all of a sudden he freaking sends me a dm to propose marriage to me from that vantage point i dare you to go after the dude that was taking lazarus in my car that is the orb around me that is the spiritual constitution about me that is a generational curse that is yanking at my jersey from the back trying to pull me into it i apparently allegedly can only attract namby pamby little fluffy boys that want to play man in the life of a woman insofar as it was it, it is within a safe ecosystem or landscape i have been left to languish and suffocate at the hands of wicked women and at the hands of a wicked country and at the hands of darkness by men that are just not happy to fight. There was a guy, a, a graphic designer, that reached out to me, offering me all different kinds of help to try and get my YouTube channel going. And I told him that everybody, I can literally, just giving him a caveat, I let him know that, uh, first of all, I'm aware you're a guy, so if you don't have ulterior motives, by all means, you can help me. But I also need to just kind of highlight this, put this out there, that I'm going through a lot. And everybody who tries to help me gets attacked spiritually by something. So unless you've got a very strong spiritual walk with Jesus, you're not going to be able to fight the demonic attack you're going to be endured through just because you're trying to help me. And I never heard from him again. He rocked up looking all heroic. Ah, bere, Spider-Man suit or uh, like a uh, suit. Yeah, so yeah, Superman. Like looking like freaking Rabobi or something. He rocked up here looking like Batman. Also, I'm here ready. Hey, like Lois, because I'm Clark Kent, because I'm Superman. I'm here to rescue you. But as soon as it got real, as soon as he got explained to the potential spiritual um, ramifications of trying to help me, as soon as he got told that you're going to have to wear the full armor of God, he cowered. The random skedaddled, that is a South African man for you. Those are South African men. The only... Hey guys, guys, like I don't even get pursued in this country. As soon as these guys notice that there is something gangster uh, encircling me. Which is why I'm, I'm certain I'm going to end up married to a man from another country. There has only been, in this entire season of my sorrow, one dude that wanted to ride out the storm with me. Only one. And he was from the U.S. He was a wicked man, we get it. However, he tried. He tried to fight this. It turns out that the only way that I am going to be rescued from this orb around me that attracts Nambi Pambi men is if I leave the geographical location within which this principality and the country is operating and so therefore be gazed upon with neutrality by men of another land. Then on that day they can make a, a, no, a normal decision where I am concerned. I've been made a Cinderella, a damsel in distress, however, one that does not get aided by a Prince Charming. Because there are none in my country. Literally. There is no knight in shine, shining armor coming for me. Not from South Africa. Because South African men are like, yo, we are so good. There's nothing in it for me. On top of that, like goodness, there's like a whole bunch of sorcery following her. Obviously, she's cursed. And so they scour, they, they, they cower, they scatter, they skedaddle. So if any, if, if I'm ever going to get married to a South African man, I will have to severely compromise myself i will have to forget about longing for a spiritual warrior because we won it against flesh and blood because i am a bringer down of strongholds and i am a pursued targeted individual for i am in christ and i'm actively fighting generational curses and i cannot be with a man that has not warred in the same way so since their christianity is fluffy it's lowly it is uh, you know soft it, it has no firmness it's like muscles that are you know reaching dystrophy because of the fact that they just mean they just want to enter heaven hey like maintain just a baseline sort of kind of christianity i mean you don't know like go out of your way to sin against god you're not fornicating you are not a drunk you are not this and that but you're also not a spiritual warrior you're just a dude that got saved and so you stop fornicating but you are not a warrior i can't i can't you will literally fall splat on the ground if you endured the kind of spiritual war that i endure every single day and when i'm still standing fervent and strong running this race keeping the faith in the middle of a spiritual war you are gonna feel exasperated by the fact that I am so strong and so be like Ike Turner be annoyed with the fact that your woman is stronger spiritually I can't I need a man that knows how to fight with God not with God for the cause of God and indeed with God like Israel so that he can bless him I've fought with God I have lamented and groaned and kept myself uh, sutured to him despite all of the things that have been getting or at least attempted stolen from me and then I'm expected to go and settle for some dude. Women are supposed to be led by men. And so I can't be such a strong Christian and be with a man that is not similarly strong. I can't. He has to be either similarly, if not more strong. A man that can indeed hold 
mm, fought when I have fainted when bullets a hail of them have come at me and I am temporarily in downtime I need somebody that's gonna be able to stand in the gap for me and there is no one in this country that has done that it is because you are judged you are happy to take your fluffy namby pamby Christianity you can't afford to be fluffy and namby pamby and weak not so much lukewarm because it's not like you are not Christian you are some of you but what you are are weak soldiers you are yet to be trained you are fat you're pudgy you you don't have um stamina to endurance in the battlefield and so you get knocked down quickly easily you you hold everybody else back you're heavy you are not lean you are fat and if at all you you are that kind of christian in africa yes like it get le balang dream dream on christians in south africa about ever conquering the darkness of this land you can literally dream on you cannot be a fat soldier on the battlefield in a country that is so rich and thriving with lean soldiers for satan and be okay you will be a christian you'll go to heaven you will get in by the skin of your teeth you might even have two and a half kids and think your life is okay but you will inevitably be marry your mother's you will be your mother's daughter or you will your mother's son or your father's son you will perform the mistakes of your forefathers the generational curses will follow you so if you are a godly man you will inevitably marry a woman that merely professes christ but is not of god and is a bush little jezebel or loyang that's why God did not give you a Jezebel. You settled for one because that's inevitably what it is that you, the men in your family were supposed to marry. And so you married one because you wouldn't fight. You wouldn't go to war. Um, and no, I get again. Next part.